What is Mighty Buildings? What is the mission? Mighty Buildings is a technology platform. It's really focused on working two massive crises. One is a home crisis, as well as the environmental crisis that we have going on today. So it's really finding solutions, enabling solutions that accommodate both issues that are really facing the world globally today. Looking at 3D printing homes, how does that allow Mighty Buildings to add to the housing stock in perhaps a, a more expeditious way? So we look at it from a two-pronged approach. One is if you look at the contribution of the construction industry in general towards the environment. You know, holistically from end to end, it's about 39% contribution when you look at the overall global energy um, carbon footprint. So working on just adding more housing to the industry using traditional construction methods is just going to further exacerbate that problem. So we're looking at it in terms of how do you really fix that housing problem, the crisis that we're facing without contributing negatively to the environment. The way we operate is we have incredibly well calibrated 3D printed technology that allows us to build housing panels in a consumer electronics type environment. So you have automation that is taking waste out of your system. 80% uh, of our processes are, autom are automated, which allows us to produce longer hours, higher quality standards, better controls throughout the whole process. Which at the same time, it enables us to produce more efficiently in that we're producing exactly what the developers need. So there's no excess, there's no waste. So looking at holistically, we are looking at more efficient operations to produce the units as well as getting those in the hands of our developers to put them in the field. Uh, all that put together it just enables a whole end-to-end -end process that's so a lot more efficient. What are your homes made of? What is, what is the stuff that people see squirting out of the nozzle? So this is a great question. Besides the automation and the way we manufacture our units, a big part of our success story is the resins and the materials that we use. When you look at 60% recyclable material being used in our process, our carbon footprint is significantly less than concrete. So we're able to produce these chemistries by our internal chemists that are proprietary to our process. And we're, we source that globally. So not only are we actually getting these at much lower carbon emission is in, in general, uh, but we also are able to secure strategic sourcing opportunities that allow us to be more resilient in terms of from supply chain protection standpoint. If you look at the homes that we're building, and the standards we set relative to wind, uh, being able to really sustain high-speed winds, fire protection, snow loads, seismic activity, all these things in the superior nature of these panels being load-bearing, we are much different in our, all of our characteristics compared when you compare us to concrete. So we're meeting two requirements. We're really dealing with the environmental element of it, and we're making superior products simultaneously. So it's really a great recipe. You are also able to focus on quantity. You're able to kind mm -hmm. of sit down in one spot and build a whole bunch. Talk to me a little bit about that, partnering with developers. Partnering with developers, we're looking for those forward-thinking developers, the ones that are taking opportunities that we're presenting them. For example, think of our kit almost as a Lego building block. You present this kit. It's highly adaptable to multi-regions across the globe, not just in the state of California, even though we're starting in the state of California, the great state of California, but this is really a, a, a problem across the U.S., and the globe. So you take the kit, you design around the kit for deployment purposes. It's almost like really understanding the product requirements for that region and modifying the Lego kit to fit the requirements locally. Uh, and it makes it much faster also. The framing of the unit is much faster than anything else. We're 75% faster end-to-end -end deploying homes versus traditional home construction. So that only allows you to scale quickly, higher quality, less reliance on very skilled labor that's also not available anymore, or it's very much, in re it's just hard to find the labor at this point. Um, so again, it allows you to scale with these forward-thinking developers that are willing to take the leap of efficient homes, environmentally sustainable, and also from a utility perspective, the characteristics of our homes allow you to operate homes at much cheaper utilities. Insulation that we provide is superior to anything else that we, that's out there and it becomes a holistic system in, 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 in your, in, on your land base and your property. Oftentimes people hear, oh, a robot is able to do what humans used to do, a robot's taking jobs. But mm -hmm. from my understanding, what I'm hearing is that actually this is helping leverage a dwindling workforce and giving people who are in the workforce still uh, higher tech construction jobs. So 
the automation, the robotics you're adding are contributing to efficiencies in the process, taking on these mundane operations that are really easily accommodated with a robot versus a human interaction. But if you want to think about also, we're deploying micro factories near our sites, which are creating more labor, more work, more income for the state of the jurisdiction where we're setting up these factories. You don't want to build homes and ship them across the globe. You want to build local factories to enable you to deploy closer to your sites. So these micro factories are enabling us to really also create the jobs in certain regions as we deploy, which it makes it again a win-win strategy for everybody. Realistically, you know, compared to a conventionally built home of the same size, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of a price difference are we looking at? What kind of a, a time frame difference are we looking mm -hmm. at? So without getting into too, sp too much of the specifics on the pricing portion, we're pretty much pushing parity, cost parity with traditional stick build uh, homes with much improved performance on the sustainability front. When you compare us to stone or concrete built homes, we're actually about 15% cheaper in the way we do our business. And again, this all goes back to our ability to source uh, materials, to really deploy materials, to expedite our operations in the factory with robotics and automation. So we're, we're approaching you know, much better cost targets than the concrete or the stone portion of the business. Time-wise, um, if, if you look at traditional stick built homes, literally pushing about 75% faster deployments so when you go from 12 to 18 months now we're talking about you know six to eight months to end to end our homes are framed much faster the rest of it is all the portions about jurisdictions and permitting processes and so on and so forth so the physicality of it is much faster but i'm giving you the end-to-end -end process and currently are there portions of your homes that are still conventionally built yeah so it's a journey we're starting today with um what we consider our kit which is your ability to frame the home the walls the roof cassettes, the doors, the windows, and basically the, tra the traditional components are your typical, the drywall, the, 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 um, the flooring, uh, any appliances that go into, which is typical of any home. However, as we progress with our designs, a lot of the what we call mechanical, electrical, plumbing features are planned to be integrated into our systems, which makes it a lot more efficient also for deployments. We are balancing modularity, the modular build approach, with cost, so we're not, you know, you're not doing the fully build volumetric modular approach because it's very expensive also for deployments. We're actually doing this right balance between being agile quick with the right modules in your homes. Uh, so it's a balancing act at this point. We're going to continue to pivot as technology evolves as we develop more modules for our homes. Mighty Buildings is moving away from ADUs and working more with developers to create you know, multiple houses within different jurisdictions, right? Uh, yes, so we're no longer doing the B to C model. We're working directly with developers. Again, those are the forward thinking developers. Um, and we are looking at larger deployments versus the one or two homes here and there. So again, it's a scaling um, a system that we're approaching and it's, uh, we're very fortunate we're seeing significant demand for those, for those developments at, at scale. So uh, we're in a really good position to go forward. Have all the developments and builds so far been in the state of California? We are starting in the state of California. Uh, clearly the issues that we're addressing with the climate crisis and the housing crisis extend beyond the boundaries of California statewide and globally. So everything we've learned over the past five years is really applicable across the entire U.S. It's just wonderful to start in the state of California, having the state of California being the leading uh, state again in, in resolving major issues that are facing the world. And we're definitely going to expand this outside of the state of California and globally. So the misconception of 3D construction is you're building these dark, dingy, concrete, 3D printed homes that are just really not focused on the yet end user experience. Our homes are modern looking, they're bright, they're focused on energy consumption, um, they're cosmetically appealing from the interior as well as the exterior. Um, so it's a different, we're changing the whole paradigm of what is, what is a 3D printed home. I think people are seeing the results in the homes that we're deploying. Um, everything you look at here is pretty much spoken for from an ADU perspective, so there's nothing here that's not sold at this point, so we're lucky in that we have all this pent-up demand for our product. And the misconception of 3D printed homes um, is dissipating, going away, and thinking, wow, there's a huge benefit to this. I would venture to go as far as to say, why would you not want a 3D printed home, considering the cosmetics, the energy efficiency, the positive impact on the climate, all that tied together, I would be hard to say, why would you not do it? How do you handle that with permitting, with getting uh, you know, uh, not only developers, but also the local mm -hmm. officials on board with this? So Mighty Building is very unique in a positive way in that we start with our raw materials. 
the certification of our raw materials. How do you get underwriters or laboratories to approve our materials? Say, yep, these are the quality standards that are gonna go into your manufacturing process. That whole educational process is well on its way. The homes that are actually being certified today also, we're working with jurisdictions, with government agencies and, 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 and regulatory agencies. They're seeing the results and basically we're moving forward with that. But there's definitely an educational process because these are different than your stick build operation. Um, and also it, it stems not only from the home itself, but all the way down to the foundation. How are you deploying it in the field? And as we go further and further into the sustainability initiative for reducing the impact on climate, you're gonna see some more innovative designs that are gonna come across. So the educational process, the collaboration with the regulatory authorities, with the jurisdictions, being aware of all the, um, um, the bills and, and, and the regulations that are coming down the pipe in the state of California and across the US, it's important that we stay in sync with all of it and we're definitely proactive in all, all those fronts. But there's definitely an educational piece of this, not only with the developers, but all the approving authorities as well, and we're actively doing all that. I think we're just scratching the surface where this can go, and um, we're super excited about this opportunity, especially that we're focused on sustainability and the, the, the climate crisis.